Hello developers, welcome back to another episode. In this episode, we are going to be building a game which is called as memory game as you can see over here. So what this game basically does is, let's give it a try. So as the name suggests, it's, it actually tests your memory. So when you click on the start or restart button, it will give you a preview of 5 seconds with the cards being displayed out. So then you will have another 10 seconds which can be changed according to your difficulty level if you want and then you have to select those cards if it matches it stays on if it doesn't match it will like show for 500 milliseconds and then turn back again so that's it this is the whole logic of the memory uh, memory game and then once the game is over like it will ask you for a confirmation saying that okay do you want to play again or do you want to go back so if you click on do you want, you want to play again then what basically happens is it again shows for another five seconds and then we get to basically play again so this is the whole logic so as you can see, if you selected the wrong ones, it will show you for 500 milliseconds and then go back. So also it will show you the moves, how many moves you have used so far. And then like the score is basically you have selected one of it. So the score will be one. And in the end, if you have passed, then it will show the total score as well. And then if you don't want to continue the game, then you can just press cancel. It will take you back to the home page. All right. So this is what we are going to building now. And what I'm going to do is like, let's create the whole necessary HTML, CSS, and then like the basic JS uh, that's required for building the game. So as initial, we will create an extra HTML file. And then I will also create a styles.css file and also create a script.js file. Okay. And then the index.html file, I have the HTML contents already in, in the code. So you can actually get this particular code from a description link I will put in the video description. So that will take you to a GitHub page. You can just directly copy it from over there. Or if you want to give yourself, give yourself a challenge, then you can actually try to build this particular interface or you can even modify it if you want. So what I just need is this particular classes and then the IDs that we are gonna be using, right? So this is it's just basically, a like normal HTML file, which is including a styles.css file and then the script.js file. And then it has a game container, which is handling a message class and then the game timer class and then the grid score and reset button, that's it. So if you notice, like in the game itself, you can see that your game will start in like four or five seconds, right? So this is being handled by the message element. And then the, this is the game timer, which is being handled in the game timer class. And then all these grids, all these cards is stored in the grid element. And then the moves or score element is being handled in this particular score element. And then obviously the reset button, that's it. This is just purely basic things. And then this is a small HTML file. And as you can notice in the beginning of the game, there is not even a single element of over here, like which is visible except for the button so that are all being handled by the CSS, which I will copy it now, which you can also find in the description. So if you notice the message and game timer, I'm setting the display to none in the beginning. And then there are some button styling. And okay, uh, this one, we can group it together. So I will just group it together. Then I will give you the link to the CSS file in the description. So you can just copy paste it and then be done with it. Okay, these are some basic styling. If you notice, we have all these cards and then each card has a flipped class. So if the card is flipped, then the background will be the blue and then the element is being hidden by the font size, right? So that's about it. That's the basic styling of the our memory game, okay? And then let's get into the development part of it. So once you have the index.html and style.css, I'm going to be using an extension called live server in VS code. You can just search for live server and extensions, and then you will find it over here. I have already installed it. If you haven't installed it, you can install it. So what live server does is once you have live server, live server installed, you can just press on go live within the folder. You have saved all these files. Then it will look for the index.html in that particular folder and then give out the um, page in a port. If you if you notice, so the benefit of using is is that 
if you ch make a change and then save it instead of refreshing it will automatically refresh for you so you can immediately basically see the change whenever you save it that's it so it's actually much helpful when you're developing for the first time or like even as you go on you tend to use it so much all right so once you have it let's get into the script script.js file okay here we need to show all these icons right so in the beginning if you notice these are the icons we have so most of the time this will be replaced by in an actual game this will be replaced by some images for now what i'm thinking is i will just go ahead and then i will use emojis which is by default it's there in windows and linux so i'm creating an empty array called icons and then i'm pressing i'm going to press windows key plus the dot key which will give you the emoji selector and in the emoji selector you can choose any emoji you want so that emoji must be treated as a string so we will enclose in quotes and then same one again windows dot and then i'm going to be using bear and so on i have already you can use any combination of emoji you want just make sure that you don't repeat any emoji in this particular array so i'm going to be copying which i have already created i have 10 emojis all are unique and then i'm also going to be taking a duplicate of it because we need exactly two of each other right so two pandas two rabbits two birds right so i'm going to be taking a complete copy of this particular array and then putting it in the next another array so for that instead of doing it again copy pasting it we are going to be using something called spread operator from esx instead of this we can use spread the operator from ESX so even if you want to change uh, some of the elements from the first array icon you don't have to basically copy it, copy it again instead of that you can use the spread operator icons so what it does is if you give any array prefixed by the spread operator it will take the actual value instead of the memory reference so what memory reference is that each of these value is being stored in a memory reference right so if you normally like let's say cons icons to equal to icons if you do that then it actually reference this particular icons array instead of actually copying the value so this can cause issues if you change this value and don't want it to be reflected in this particular array what happens is it will get automatically updated and then you will be stuck with the same array for these two so in our case i am just introducing you guys to this particular operator so that you can actually use it in your live project and another projects as time goes on so this will actually take a copy of this array and shallow copy it so if you don't know what shallow copy and deep copy means you can google it and then you will understand like what is mean by shallow copying and deep copy so if you search for MDN, I think MDN has a yeah article for it. So this will help you understand much deeper about what is shallow copying and deep copying. So by using the spread operator, I'm actually shallow copying this icons and into saving it into an icons to array. All right. So once you have it, then the next step would be accessing all these elements. So I'm going to be setting it to a variable for each of these elements because uh, throughout the script we are going to be using it again so instead of each time we are going to accessing that element each time instead of that we can actually save it to an element so that element will hold the position of that particular i mean that variable will hold the position of that particular element so that's going to be helpful in throughout the script so i'm going to be accessing the grid element into this grid variable so if you notice the grid element has an id of grid so we can access it by document dot get element by id and then grid right and then same thing goes for score element and then the restart button so both for both of them i'm going to be creating variables called score element document dot get element by id score and then the restart button also document dot get element by id restart button okay and then i also want the message element and game timer element in order to show this update this particular time element 
time which needs to be shown for the preview previewing part and then the actual gaming part okay so i'm gonna call it as message l equal to document dot query selector and then dot message so if you want to understand how does the selection of this particular document works i have explained it in my javascript basics video which you can find it over here in the top corner of your screen and also i will link it to the description and then the next one will be game timer l which also can be accessed using a query selector and then with the class game timer right so i'm gonna be using that game timer and then let's just double check if all these elements have been properly assigned to these variables so score element restart button message l game timer l comma icons and then icons too okay so let's go to our live server and then check as you can see the grid is selected correctly as of now it doesn't have any element that's why it's empty as you can see if you notice the grid has a 400 width and then height of zero and then we have a score element which also doing the same and then the reset button is there and then the message element and game timer element are hidden as of now if you notice the styles it is actually hidden so that's why it's not showing up over here but it's still able it's it is still able to access it so if you notice our elements tab so the message and game timer are there but the style is actually hidden so display is none that's why you can't see it and then if you check at the icons both of them are there the exact same copy of it okay so that our icons and the elements are selected now let's move on to the um, empty array declaration so we want to store all these cards into a cards array so i will initialize a cards empty array and then i will also initialize a flipped cards array what it is is so let's say in this case if you start the game and then you are waiting for five seconds after that the moment you select two cards these two cards needs to be stored somewhere then only we can check for the equality right so we check okay is this equal to the is this equal to this particular card if not then we have to revert it back so to handle that we will use the flip cards array and then we also need to keep track of the score and then the moves right so we will go with moves first and then we will also use the score initialized to zero okay and then we also need to have a timer element so the total game time as you can see each of these game is preview previewing for five seconds so we will display the i mean we will initialize the previewing time to five seconds so i'm initializing it globally because in in the future if you want to introduce a difficulty level then you can just based on the difficulty ask the uh, gamer to actually select the difficulty level let's say easy medium or hard and based on that you can update the value of the view seconds and the timing seconds the actual gaming time seconds so in order to like do it in the future you can declare a global variable called card view seconds over here and then the let total game time seconds i guess as a global variable over here so that we can be using it in throughout the script right so we have our cards array flip cards array set moves and score initialized to zero and then the card preview seconds and then the game time seconds total game time seconds has been set now what we will do is we will also initialize two variables for the timer to be handled so in javascript we have a functionality called set interval which we are going to be using to show the timer as it progresses through right so this five, four, three, two, one, and going back, right? So this can be handled or this can be utilized using the set interval functionality. So set interval needs to be cleared once you have hit the limit. So let's say you are starting from five seconds and then once you hit zero, it needs to be cleared. So for that, we will create two variables. 
and then this we will be using as the script goes through okay for now don't worry about it much um, i'm gonna be just introducing i mean just putting it out there but we will use it properly as the script goes on okay so that's about it that's the whole bootstrapping part as we need for the game application as of now and then in the next episode i will go ahead and then teach you guys about the shuffling part and then the basic initialization of the game all right so if you can if you guys can figure it out then go ahead and give it a try or let's code it together so until next episode keep coding thank you for watching don't forget to share like and subscribe